The Arsenal, they have their man, they have their man. But what happens to the amazing, incredible, powerful 2.0 Zinchenko? Arsenal moving, they're making moves, they're making moves, they're making moves, they have their man. They have their man, Kala Fiore, Ricardo Kala Fiore, the very, very, very highly rated um, centre-back, central defender um, from Bologna, who obviously really was, even if Issy didn't play well, he was actually one of the shining the defenders um, in the, well, the three games he was in, but remember, he was suspended for that game that lost to Switzerland. And people say that was actually a huge miss. Um, if he had played, I still think they lose, but they definitely, definitely missed his presence in defense in that game against Switzerland. So it's a good signing. It's a good signing, but we're actually going to get into positions a bit more. But let's just talk about your boy, Color Fury. So you see, the thing though is, let's keep it real. We're no longer in the 90s anymore. You see, so back in the 90s, so you could say mid 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 to late eighties, nineties, early two thousands. So maybe from like eighty six to like oh four, oh five, maybe oh six. Syria was then the number one league. So if you did well in Syria, you were considered the best. So to prove your worth in football, you had to make it in in, in Syria. Just like hey, you got to make it in Hollywood. You had to make it in Syria. Post Calcio Poli, post Moji, post Juve breastfeeding that league for almost a decade, no one looks to Syria as to, oh, these are not the elite guys. So even though he had a very good season, and we'll get to his season in Bologna, it's like, eh. so what really puts you on the map is in the international tournaments. You look at the Euros, people are like, bro, who is this dude? Very good de defender, hardly makes any mistakes, very good on the ball, great balance on the ball. Great in possession, can push up. He is the consummate modern defender. So everybody was like, oh, so this is this highly rated guy. But because he was now doing it in an international tournament where there's now a greater spotlight, which there isn't in Syria, everyone took notice, especially Arsenal as well. So I think what was what was very key um, was him saying what's up. It was, it, was, it was him saying what's up for Italy. And I think that is pretty much what really tipped the ice because I think Arsenal already had his, his eye on him. So even if he didn't say what's up in the Euros, Arsenal always had his eye on him based on uh, certain situations in their team and we'll get there. But I think the Euros was like, oh, this is just even pulled, it puts a greater full stop. And the key thing was because now people were knew more about him, Arsenal had to now accelerate their pursuits of him and just to make sure that we, before anyone else, they capture his signature and they say, what's up, which is what they did um, getting your boy all the way up, up, up in that piece, man. So, um, so then now, this is where it now gets interesting. So initially, I was like, oh, if you are, if Color Fiori is, is, is coming through, then between Saliba and Gabriel, I think Saliba is the better defender. Now, Arsenal fans say Gabriel is better, but I think that I've seen Gabriel make more mistakes than Saliba, and I think, and I watched Saliba at the Euros for France against Austria. He is a really good de defender, excellent on the ball, excellent on the ball. So I think, okay, so it's going to be a Saliba Califuri defensive partnership and Gabriel, boom. But what do we always say about football? This is like the ABC of football never break a great defensive partnership, never do it. Arsenal have been defensively good, and a big reason for that is. Gabriel and Saliba have been a very good defensive partnership. So you don't want to break that out. So he started as a left back. So he came through the Roma Academy and he actually started as a left back. So he's left footed. He started as a left back. Then he moved to central defense. So if we're looking at left backs right now, um, and I mean this with all due disrespect, I mean this with all due disrespect, Ship this bum off. Ship him. Amazon Prime, first class to delivery. Heck, use, use freaking, ship him. Ship him. FedEx. FedEx is this freaking dude. Zinchenko's trash. 
the, the guy, the guy, the guy's guy. But there's a reason why Pep got rid of him. And when you've seen what he's done for Arsenal, he's he's been he's been he's been useless. So um that's so for Zinchenko, nah. It 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 it, 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 it ain't it's for for, 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 the, for that dude, man. So actually, oh yeah, so so remember, so that's what I'm saying. Left back. So yeah. So my thing is, yeah, get rid of this freaking dude. Get rid of this freaking dude. So the natural thing is, oh yeah, Kala Fury, he comes in for your boys in so now. Nah, 100%. Zinchenko, now you are completely out of this discussion completely because between Kala Fury and Zinchenko, there's, there's not even a freaking debate. Zinchenko is a better defender. He's better on the ball. He's better bringing the ball forward. He offers more going forward. He's a lot better. But what it now gets interesting is he's been solid. He's been really solid. So I think... When Tomiyasu was injured, they were forced to play Zinchenko. If everybody's fit, oh, Tomiyasu is, is ahead of Zinchenko for the left-back position. So he's solid. But I think this is similar to the video that I did with um, talking about Juan Bissaka and Ma 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 Mazraoui. We have to look at modern four football. Tomiyasu is a very good defender. Very solid. He's not that great going forward. And I don't think he's as comfortable going forward as he is defending. So I think Kala Fiori... Watching his highlights, looking at him and also looking at him at the Euros, he's very comfortable going forward. And I think in that left back position, Arsenal will improve a lot more offensively. And I think that it would actually be a lot more... They, 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 they're going to they're gonna be, be a lot more in that final third. So, unfortunately for, for, for Tomiyasu, if Call of Fury is in, he now comes to the left back position. So, Tomiyasu would play left back. Um... And I, and, I, and I don't think that it would be too much of a readjustment of him because he has played there be, before. So, so you like stats? Check out that. So, this campaign. Um, most possession won 194 times. Most aerial deals won 60. Most interceptions 50. And most assists. So the guy also knows how to give assists as well. And I believe this was as a central defender. So now, as a left back, you could probably... Um, expect that assists figure to actually go off even higher if he's now more reading on that left back position. And now this is what's interesting. Oops, sorry. Um, so this was last season. So the so goals against Bologna had the third best defensive record. So obviously, Inter twenty two goals conceded, the best, followed by Juve thirty one goals conceded, and then Bologna. 32. So this is a little old Bologna. So we don't see freaking Rome, Roma there or any of those guys. So the fact that your boy, well, first, was well, a shout out to your boy, Tiago Mata, who's now the UV manager, was first of all, Bologna were able to get fifth position and they had the third best defensive record and they were all, and UV only conceded one more goal less than Bologna. That is very impressive. And a big reason for that was what was him. So he was a massive reason why they had that goals record of only 32 goals conceded. So look, it's a it's a good signature. It's a good signature for Arsenal. But, but, but. In a team, everything matters. You need a keeper. You need a defender. You need your midfield, you need your attack, everything matters. But at the end of the day, we are in the fishnet game. This is the fishnet game. It's about how many times can I get the ball inside the fishnet. And the issue for Arsenal is they don't have a good enough fishnet merchant. You need a really good, dependable fishnet merchant. And I think Havertz has actually done good at Arsenal, but... Why, why are we here? What are we here for? It's to stop Thanos. We're here to stop Thanos. And how you stop Thanos is, yes, a color fury is, is part of that. But really it's about tough game, tight game. We're down 1-0. Can we get the equalizer? 0-0. Zero, zero, let's get the go-ahead goal. 1-1. One, last three minutes. Who's going to produce some magic out of nothing? Because that was why this dude was so good. This dude was so good because he could produce something out of nothing. Magic. We all remember that goal. He's got against Man United, back against goal, turn round, volley, right foot over batters. That's the kind of individual piece of magic that is needed for Aston because sometimes the whole team play pass, pass, pass. It may not fly. 
Sometimes someone needs to say, screw that. Let me take it upon myself and say what's up and create a piece of individual magic to help us win the game. Because at the end of the day, all that matters is getting the ball inside the fishnet. It's not how you get the ball inside the fishnet. It's getting the ball inside the, the fishnet. So for us now, they need a potent goal scorer. Now we're hearing Tony is saying that if he doesn't get a move this summer, he's going to run down his contract. Arsenal, so whether it's Tony, whether it's Vlavic, whoever it may be, Arsenal need to find a dependable goal scorer, which is not Havertz. Havertz, as we saw at the Euros, bro, I was in Germany and I was talking to Germans and Germans said, no, Fulkrug is a better striker. Fulkrug was far more popular and far more loved and they believed in him more to get the goal than Havertz. Havertz is not a goal scorer. Havertz is a, is a good player. He's a good footballer. He plays off of a striker. You play him in it too. He can't be your main goal getter. He cannot be your main target man. He can't be at the top of the key. No. No. If you play him with a striker where he now plays off of him and he now plays in... You see, but what makes it tricky is Odegaard because you can't... Because Odegaard is arguably the best num number 10. No. He is the best number 10 in the Premier League. It ain't, it ain't Foden. Foden is a false 10. So... I mean, do you play... I mean... It's going to be hard. It's something that Atleti needs to figure out. But I'm saying right now, this is just from a humble football analyst. Hanvers doesn't work as a striker. You play him in a two. So how you figure that out, whether you have a two strikers or the guy behind, but then when you now put Saka, you've got to figure it out structurally. Maybe I'll do a video and trying to figure that out. But yeah, Arsenal, they need a striker. So Calafiore, this is a good, this is good designing. And this improves them. They have gotten better now because that left-back position has now improved. They've improved defensively. They've also improved offensively. So this is a plus. But 100%, they need to get that dependable goal scorer that complements Trossard, complements Saka, complements Odegaard.